Hey, YA book fans, thanks for joining us for our fourth and highly anticipated Teen Zone book talk. This week we're talking about Never World Wake by Marisha Pessel. And we have Savvy B, like always, our YA book super fan. And also this week we have special guest, our friend Sam Colwell from the Ashborough Library Children's Room. Welcome to both of you. So this is the book. And I will tell you that the first time I looked at this cover, I did not realize this was a face. <laughs> This, I thought it was just mountains, oh. and then by the third or fourth time I picked it up, I realized that, that was a whole face right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> in this book, um, we have a lot of characters that we follow, but that really does give us a lot to work with, with storyline. So, at Darrow Harker School, which I believe, it, Sam, is it like a college or like a prep school? It seemed like a college. It's like a prep school. It's okay. Richie Rich and some kids who aren't so Richie Rich that go. Gotcha. Okay. So we're at Darrow Harker School with Beatrice Hartley and her five best friends. And they're the cool kids, of course. But after the shocking death of one of their best friends, Jim, who is also Beatrice's boyfriend, everything kind of goes south for this group of kids. Um, the book kind of starts out a year after graduation and B is what they call her in the book. B is returning to Wincroft, which is a seaside estate where the group spent a lot of their nights, where they hung out. Um, and she really wants to find answers about Jim's death. She wants to know what happened because she's just confused and she's lost. Um, but when she thinks she won't find answers, a mysterious man knocks on the door. He tells them that time for them has become stuck. And they have been placed in a limbo-like state called the Neverworld Wake. And in the Neverworld Wake, they are forced to face their truths and make ultimate decisions. One of them being that only one of them can return to the world of the living. And they all must agree or they will be stuck in the Neverworld Wake forever. Um, what set this one apart? In this one, there is a car accident in the very beginning and there's a sliver of hope that one of them could survive it and they're in this sort of limbo and it's a moral limbo where they all have to decide which one of us deserves to live the most which one of us deserves to come back to life um, and it's really eerie and I think the tone of the book sets it apart from the other YA novels that I've read before it's almost like you take inception and you blend it with a wrinkle in time with the cast of The Breakfast Club and you have this book. Yeah, that's definitely the vibe that I got. Um, it's very, I mean, and you can kind of see it in the cover of this book. Like looking at this cover, this is how I imagined if you made a movie out of this book, it's this grayscale kind of rainy color all the time and so on the night that they get stuck in the Neverworld Wake, it's raining and they're forced to repeat this same set of hours over and over and over again. Therefore, it is always raining because that's what happened when they got stuck there. So it kind of does give that inception, dark, kind of creepy, but also like just, I don't know, you see that in a lot of movies. I could really see what it would look like if I was watching this instead of reading it. It really did give good visuals. Fascinating. What about the book uh, drew you in? It's an it's an interesting take. Was it the character development, or was there? You mentioned the setting. Uh, is it just the sort of novel uh, idea of being stuck in a in a middle realm? What was it that you both liked about this particularly? Well, I know Sam is the one who originally told me to read it. She read it and she said, you've got to read this book. So I read it just because she told me to. And she always knows the best books. Once I got into it, I think it really was the fact that they're stuck in limbo. And that was the most fascinating part to me. Um, I don't know about Sam, but it definitely was something that really piqued my interest. So what do you think, Sam? For me, it was the author. The author, Marisha Pessel, is one of my favorite authors of all time. Her other novels, um, Topics and Calamity Physics, it's a thick read, uh, and it's more of an adult read, but it's so good. And then she also did a book called Night Film, which is also more of an adult read. So I thought if she's writing a YA novel, you can kind of see 
you know, if you really liked this one, and as you're getting older, you're more interested in kind of the dark noir um, fiction that you'll kind of lean towards her more adult writing. It's just, she's a magnificent writer. When you read what she's writing, what the characters are saying, you hear those words in your head, you know people, you know these characters in your real life. And she just brings, she brings the world to life. Wow. Yeah. Um, Savvy and I have talked about this before in other videos, and we talk about it a lot, um, just people who like books. So many books are formulaic, and so many books have just sort of the same thing over again. And um, I'm beyond hoping for original, in most cases, when I read something, uh, a fiction story, because there's no... Uh, no chance that you're not going to borrow something. There isn't going to be a trope taken from here or from there. Mm -hmm. um, and so when a YA book like this one de departs as it does um, uh, on a tangent away from what you normally expect, it's very refreshing. Yeah, and this is a refreshing read. That's a great word for it. It's very different. It's really funny that you say um, the thing about being formulaic because they do have to repeat the same day over and over again. So for a while they get stuck because they're all frustrated. They can't decide who should go back, that kind of thing. And so for a very long time, I was talking to Sam about this. It, I believe they were stuck there for years and years and years and years and years and years, like forever. But in the book, you know, she doesn't go every single day she doesn't talk about it but they do end up doing some of the same things every day for a very long time but the book itself does not have that same like repetitive nature or the same outline that you would see in a lot of YA books which was really cool well Sam do you want to tell us what you liked and didn't like about um, this book so what I liked most about this book was the tone that I mentioned is really eerie and kind of nostalgic feeling. I really liked that it's consistent. It stays on its brand the whole way through. Some YA books, they start out strong and they kind of peter around and beat around the bush, but this one really stays on track. And what I disliked was the twist ending. I mean, it needed to be there and I understand it, but I wonder how everyone is gonna read it. I wonder if other people are gonna like it they're going to think it's too easy of a tie up. What do you think? I definitely agree about the ending. Um, I think I was actually texting you the whole time I was finishing this book, just confused a little bit. Like this, this is how we're ending this. This one's how we're going to go with this. Okay. Um, it's definitely, I just, I didn't see it coming. I say that almost every time, but <laughs> I don't know if it was in, I didn't see it coming in a good way, you know, like, I, I think you're right about that, Sam, the ending kind of did, it ties everything up, but it's definitely different. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think for me, one of the things that I definitely didn't like was it got a little muddy in the middle for me when they're stuck in the never world they get a little complacent and they just are so frustrated with the fact that only one of them gets to live really and so for a while and like i said earlier it seems like it's for years and years and years they're just stuck reliving the same set of hours and they don't do anything for me i loved the characters they each had development and they had their oh. own plot line and what they were doing and I really did love the tone and the fact that I could really see what this book would look like if they made it into a movie. So see, that's where I, I disagree a little bit. I loved where they meandered on the everyday, like the, the years, the thousands of years they were probably in the Neverworld way, because it made you think about what if you had all the time in the world, all the time to master piano or to master tap dancing, but no one would be able to see it and no one would be able to measure your growth. What were you doing it for? What do you really love? And is it something that you love that you could love forever? It's really philosophical and really draining. <laughs> yeah. It's really cool to think about though. Yeah. You both really like this book. How many Boba Fetts are we giving this one? Sam? How many Boba Fetts? Five Boba Fetts. <laughs> Sam five. is giving five and five I'm Boba also Fetts. giving five. Wow. Five. So two, yeah. five Boba Fett's in a row. That's that's awesome. This is, uh, I'm extremely wow. interested. This this is a book that I'm looking forward to reading myself when I have a chance. 
um, and hopefully it's, it's worth the praise, but from you two, I can guarantee that it's a good book. So thank you very much for that. Savvy, I know you like to play a game where you decide what actors would play characters in the book. So do you have an idea of who you'd like to see play these parts? We do, back by popular demand. We are gonna cast this book today. So yeah, this thanks. one was a lot of fun because there are so many characters in it. Um, so I, I asked Sam if she maybe thought of anyone that she can kind of jump in here with me as well. But I'm just going to real quick go through the cast of characters. We'll put their pictures up on the screen. And it's going to be a lot of fun because this one for me, reading it, I definitely got Riverdale vibes reading this book. <laughs> so I think because of that, I ended up just seeing the cast of Riverdale as these characters. <laughs> But it was really funny because a lot of them ended up fitting into these parts very well. So to start with, for Beatrice Hartley, the main character, the one girl that you follow pretty much the whole time, I really saw Lily Reinhardt, who plays Betty Cooper in Riverdale. Um, I could see her being that sweet, innocent, confused, lost soul, but still she wants answers, you know, and she's going to find them. So I really could see Lily Reinhardt as our main character. Sam, I don't know if you agree or not. Okay, awesome. I agree. <laughs> awesome. So for the character of Jim Mason, who is the boyfriend of Beatrice, he's the friend who's passed away. I think I just automatically saw Cole Sprouse, who plays Jughead Jones in Riverdale, because him and Lily Reinhardt's character are together in Riverdale. And so I just kind of naturally put them together in my mind because I was thinking of the Riverdale cast. And that really also kind of made sense to me. Once you get to know more about Jim's character, I felt like Cole Sprouse could do a pretty good job of playing him. Um, yeah. For our next one, we have Whitley Lansing. Lansing? Lansing. Um, yeah. She is kind of like, I would say the leader of the pack. I don't know if you got that vibe, Sam, but she kind of seemed yeah. like the head girl, you know, um, Miss, Miss Pretty and Popular kind of thing is what I got from her. So I automatically saw Madeline Pesch, who plays Cheryl Blossom in Riverdale, um, because she's got that uh, confidence and that ego, I feel like she could really pull it off. Or Camila Mendez, who is Veronica Lodge in Riverdale. They both have the confidence to really pull off that character, and you need it. Once you get to know her, she's got the, the strong-willed attitude. <laughs> Next up, I kind of looked into the character of Canon. And for him, I really saw KJ Appa, who plays Archie Andrews, of course. And his character has a lot of depth to him once you get through the book. There's a lot to that character, even though he's not the main character. So I really thought that KJ Appa could do a pretty good job of pulling that off. Um, the next one, without a doubt, the whole time for me, for Kipling St. John, our character, I saw Casey Cott, who plays Kevin Keller in Riverdale. That is just 100% my pick for Kipling is Casey Cott. I think that is just a perfect fit, really, because for me, the character of Kipling in the book is literally the character of Kevin in Riverdale. Like, they're the same person to me. <laughs> yeah. We have two more. Uh, Martha Ziegler, who is kind of for me, it didn't really seem to fit into this group of friends, the way she was described. I don't know how you feel about her, Sam. Um, she's yeah, kind of she's more, she's different. She's more of a kind of a, she's a super uber intelligent, but also not someone who is a super cuddly person or kind person. And it seems like Jim befriended her for a reason. And she's in this group for a reason. Um, not the one that you would expect twist, um, but it, 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 it's interesting. But she's not, I don't know if she's on Riverdale. Yeah, so for that one, I either saw her mostly just for looks as Vanessa Morgan, who plays Tony Topaz. 
Um, if I was oh. sticking to the Riverdale cast, I would pick Vanessa Morgan just because she kind of has that same kind of bad girl, but also super smart girl vibe. And so I really kind of thought of her, but the, the number one person that even I'm even more sure about this than I am about Kipling's character, the number one person I would pick to play Martha would have to be Bex Taylor Klaus. They are an amazing actor. They are known for their roles in 13 Reasons Why, Scream, the TV show, and the movie Dumpling, which is on Netflix right now. They just, for me, ooze this character. They belong in this role, which is just 100% who I saw the whole time I was reading it. Very cool. Um, Very cool. For the last character... I really wanted to cast the old man, or I believe he's called the keeper in the book. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sam. Um, He's the one who kind of tells them the rules of the Neverworld Wake. He kind of is the one guiding them and keeps them on track of their purpose here and that kind of thing. So I really wanted to cast him. I saw him as either Jeremy Irons or Henry Gibson. Now, these are two people who a lot of younger people might not recognize right away, but I'll give you some clues as to who they are. So Jeremy Irons is the voice of Scar in the original Lion King movie. He also is Brom in the movie Aragon, which is based on a book. Um, Henry Gibson is Riley O'Reilly from the Disney Channel original movie Luck of the Irish, which is also just one of my favorite movies of all time. (laughs) He's also the voice of Wilbur in the 1973 cartoon version of Charlotte's Web. Those are all of my picks. Solid (laughs) casting. So, Savvy, what book are we talking about next time? So, next time, I have it here with me. We are talking about The Babysitter's Coven, and Sam is actually willing to join us for that one as well. And this one is going to be a lot of fun to talk about, for sure. We're going to have a lot to talk about on this one. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you both so much for your thoughtful uh, uh, commentary on this book and for bringing this book to our attention. Uh, we're very excited to take a look at it and maybe get into it. I like the idea of it. You've swayed me um, into maybe picking this one up and giving it a read. So thanks. If you're 12 and under, we've got a summer reading program in the children's room. If you've got a sibling that's young, uh, we're doing a summer reading joust. So you can put your minutes towards whatever night that you prefer. There's a green night, a yellow night, and a red night, and they all have their own personalities. And you can look up on uh, randolphlibrary.org slash summer, and you can click to the children's page, and you'll be able to see those nights and sign up for a summer reading. And at the end of the summer, get some prizes. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you're 12 and over, don't forget to register for summer reading and then keep logging your minutes if you've already registered. And remember to keep those minutes logged because your teachers are going to be looking at those minutes and there will be prizes when you get back to school in the fall. So just keep that in mind. And also don't forget to tune back in next time for our coming video, The Babysitter's Coming. Remember to like and subscribe and click the bell if you want to get notifications about when we put out new videos. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and go to our website and register for summer reading if you haven't, whether for children's summer reading or for teen summer reading. And thank you so much for joining us. And don't forget the three W's. Wait six feet between yourself and your friends. Wear a mask if you go out in public and wash your hands often and regularly. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. We will see you next okay. I'm just assuming okay, you so stop talking because okay, you forgot. Do we need <laughs> <laughs> so I just started waving. I was like, okay, bye. Oh. oh my He's God. not frozen. Okay. He's nope. not frozen. I was about, I literally pulled my phone up. I was like, I'm taking a picture of that one. That one's good. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Is it gonna look like this when I edit it? Are we gonna have like that I, gray box? I don't know. You could put a face there. <laughs> just a face. Just yeah. somebody. Just something creepy. There. Yeah. All of this right now is B-roll that Savvy will use to make bloopers. I'm still in a dungeon, aren't I? I was like hearing things, but I think it's on like it's outside. But I was like, it sounded like there were just rats running around, and I was like really worried for a second. Stop making that face, Savvy. I don't understand what that face is. It's because you keep freezing and like <laughs> really I can hear you. Puddle. Yeah, and everything's bad. Okay, <laughs> let's <laughs> try. <laughs> I'm. Are we I'm, ready or are we ready? I'm ready. I mean, like, if, I'm oh, struggling today. My God. Have I? Everything just keeps freezing and everyone's an alien. It's crazy. My little, my little frazzled blue head. Hey YA book fans and welcome to our fourth. That's, that's good. We're all done. Thanks guys. I appreciate you coming out and doing 